Hi, uh, this is a big painting that I'm doing of this beautiful uh, weather vane here. Um, right now I've just got the the basic silhouette shape blocked in with this this kind of brownish coppery color which is what uh, would be the base color of this beautiful copper weather vane. Uh, I'm getting ready now to do the patina. Um, if you look at this it's got this gorgeous green patina with drips and spots and so I'm going to do a technique um, that will mimic that kind of finish. Uh, it's going to take me a while to set up because I want to put some paper onto the painting here to stop all the drips and splashes that, that happen during the process. So if you want to pop back in a little while, um, I'll have it ready to go and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so I've put some brown paper on here because when I, when I put the paint on here, it's going to be quite thin, watered down with uh, mineral spirits and it's going to drip a lot. And so I put some big pieces of paper on just to minimize the amount of drips that are going to be on the actual canvas. Uh, the bottom part of the weather vane I did, I'm not going to do because you can see on the actual uh, piece here it's not made of copper, it's got a different finish. So got that all taped off. Um, one last thing to do before we put any paint on. Um, this paint has got some little bits in it. Uh, and I go over it with a, an old blunt razor blade and I just scrape the surface and it gets rid of the little bits of uh, hairs and bits of paint and as you can see it coming off I don't know if you can see but here's some of these little specks you can see the little specks where those little granules of lumps of paint and hairs and other foreign matter. Uh, now it's ready to it's ready to do the work on. So again, if you want to come back in a little while, I'm going to mix up the paint and get everything ready, and I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, I've been mixing up my color that I'm going to use for the patina. Um, I mixed a green; it was just a little too fresh, so I put a little bit of this brown in here to mud it up, and you can see it's got a nice. Uh, nice muddy color to it um, and what I do is I take I take some of it on the palette knife and I walk it over uh, and just hold it and move it around um, and in general I think that's a good match that's a good starting point it's not quite as dark as some of the darkest areas and it's not as light as some of the areas uh, a good in between so this is the color that I'm going to go with Okay, this is the uh, the paint that I had just mixed. Um, I put it into a little container with a mixture of uh, it's turpentine, stand oil, and a little bit of dryer. And it's thinned down. You can see it's very watery. And I've got a couple of brushes ready to go. And let's go. Yeah, this can be quite frightening if you uh, if you think that this is uh, going to be the finished the finished look. It. Uh, take a beautiful painting, a beautiful sky like this and start dripping stuff all over it. Um, you can see how it starts to splash and drip. That's one of the functions of the paper. It, it, it uh, catches a lot of that mess. So, I'll just put this on. Um, but you can go back and clean out. I can clean, clean it all up. up. That's what I'm going to do. And I, I Once I have done this and, and taken the brown paper off, I'll I'll call you back and show you how I how I do that. So that landscape's quite dry in the background. Yeah, it's dry and it's also got a, a finish over it that's going to protect it from anything. So to really think out steps and steps in advance, don't you? Yeah, you do. In the, in the style of painting that I do, there's a lot of um, thinking about the steps that you're going to take. really don't worry about going over the edges. I don't need to stay in the edges because once this is, once this is uh, 
worked on some more with the next technique that I'm going to show you. Um, the edges are clear, are visible through the paint, and so I can go back and clean the edges up. You're not worrying about the paint drying, are you? No. no. I've got time. Obviously, I wouldn't just go walk away and leave it uh, for some hours, but uh, I've got quite, quite some time. Several hours, it will still be workable. That's the beauty of the oil paints. Even though there is some dryer in here, but that just uh, that helps it dry overnight rather than immediately. Okay, so I think we're all set there, and uh, now we get to do the little bit of magic that really brings out the patina. Okay, I'm going to take a water bottle, just a regular old water bottle. This is seeming through thick and thin as this. Uh, done a lot of paintings with this bottle. Uh, just take the, the, the top out, set it down, and just squirt out the last few bits of water that are in there. And then literally I take my, uh, my mineral spirits uh, cleaning pot and I set this in and we start to uh, See, start to spritz some a little bit of mineral spirits on there. That's not going to take off the paint. No, it'll start it dripping. It loosens it, and it's going to start it dripping. I mean, the landscape one. No, no, the landscape won't move. This is this is just for this. I'm going to get this going. See, it's starting to move. The paint is starting to come down. And what happens is it um, it drips down from the top, so it starts to take the paint off the top here. So mm -hmm. um, I will go back. I will go back with with the brush and the paint, and I I just dab some back in there. I kind of have to nurse this along. I have to keep an eye on it and, and replenish the areas that just too much comes off. Uh, I keep, gravity does the rest. This is just uh, basically a waiting game now. I will stand here probably for the next 30 minutes, 45 minutes, doing this and respritzing it in one or two areas, um, just watching it and, and making sure that it, it progresses. So. Are you gonna add more color? Different color? That'll be, that'll be afterwards. I'm gonna let this all dry and then I'll come back and do some highlights and darkened areas and other you know just as it is on the on the actual patina here there's dark areas light areas there's you know brighter greens darker greens um there's there's layers and layers of aging and that's what i'm going to try and reproduce with the paint so we're going to keep we're just going to let that drip uh, and you can see it's starting to move again from the top as it drips down so i keep catching that back up so why don't you um, come back uh, in 30 minutes or so and uh, take a look and see what we've got